Hi folks, HR Funk here. It occurred to me when I was thinking about a topic for today's video that in the first six weeks or so of 2022, we have covered a lot of ground. We've had a lot of data that we've churned our way through looking at military selection of firearms. We've looked at some firearms reviews, and we've even tackled the heavy topic of defensive use of firearms. So I thought for today it might be fun to just have some fun and kick back a little bit and enjoy ourselves. And when it comes to having fun, what better place to look to than Hollywood, which is always good for a laugh for various reasons. But for today's topic, I thought it might be entertaining to look at Hollywood specifically and select my top 10 favorite firearms used in movies. Now, I need to clarify a couple of points here at the very beginning. First off, there are a lot of movies out there. Almost from the beginning of movies, firearms have been featured in movies. And there are a lot of great, great movies, very entertaining movies that feature the use of firearms. But I'm not looking at the movies themselves. There are a lot of movies such as Silence of the Lambs that features the use of firearms. And in the climactic scene at the end of the movie, Clarice Starling is stuck in the basement with the Buffalo Bill Killer. And in that scene, she uses a Smith & Wesson Model 13, which would have been appropriate for an FBI agent at that time. But the scene is so good and it works so well, not because of the Model 13, but because of the way the scene is set up and the acting and the way it's shot and everything else. And for a piece of cinematic art, it is outstanding but it really does not do anything that focuses on the Model 13 or its capabilities or anything else. Jodie Foster's character in that scene could have had virtually any other handgun and it would have been just as good. But there are other movies out there where the firearm selected for use by the character almost takes on a co-starring role. And in those movies, some of those firearms have even boosted the sales of the same firearm or similar firearms uh, in gun stores. And other movies have just launched those particular firearms into a sort of semi-stardom of their own. And for those firearms, I have put together my list of favorites. Now, this might not be the same as your list of top 10 favorite firearms. So in the comment section after this video, please feel free to go through and tell me your favorite firearms used in the movies. I'd be glad to read them. But for now, let's get to it, and I'm going to tell you about my top 10 favorite firearms used in a movie. So right out of the gate, I have two honorable mentions. And it was tempting when I was thinking about this to list every firearm ever used by John Wayne in a Western or every firearm ever used by Clint Eastwood in a Western. But I didn't. And again, that comes back to the fact that in all of those great, great Westerns featuring the Duke or featuring Clint Eastwood, it was always their character using whatever firearm it happened to be, normally a Colt single action or Winchester lever action or what have you. So I didn't do that. Plus, I didn't think it would be fair to, to add something like that into this video. But I do have two honorable mentions right off the bat. The first is the Smith & Wesson Model 3 Schofield used by the Schofield Kid in the Clint Eastwood movie Unforgiven. And so iconic was the portrayal of that revolver in that movie that Smith & Wesson actually reintroduced the Schofield back in the early 90s and they reproduced it for a period of time. Unfortunately, I don't have one so I can't show it to you, but I wanted to name that one as an honorable mention to my top 10 list. My second honorable mention is going to be familiar to any of you who have ever seen the movie Saving Private Ryan. And the pistol involved, or the firearm involved, is the M1911A1 pistol used by Tom Hanks as Captain John Miller at the end of the movie, in the climactic scene, where Captain Miller is wounded, and he's down on the bridge, and the enemy tank is approaching, and with literally the last of his strength, he is firing away at the enemy tank, doing really nothing to the tank whatsoever. But in that scene... Tom Hanks captured the fighting spirit of the greatest generation that won World War II. And so strong was that performance, and so impactful was the use of that M1911A1 pistol that it earned an honorable mention spot in my top 10 list. And here we go, folks. Number 10 on my list of all-time favorite movie firearms comes to us from the decade of the 1980s. 
And man, do I miss 1980s action movies. There was no undue effort spent whatsoever on trying to make them realistic or impactful or anything else. It was all pure adrenaline-charged, action-packed, escapism fun. And nothing exemplifies that much more than the movie Cobra starring Sylvester Stallone. Literally everything about that movie is over the top, right down to the way he drives his car to the crime scene. And in the opening scene of the movie, he literally skids onto the scene and finds out that bad guys have taken hostages inside a grocery store, because what bad guys don't want to take hostages inside a grocery store? And then he goes in, and when he goes in, he has nothing but a pair of cool shades, a match clenched firmly in his teeth, because everyone knows how important it is to have a match clenched firmly in your teeth when you're going into a hostage situation, and... His 1911, unlike mine, that has the Cobra grips stuffed into his waistband. What more do you need, folks? That is the recipe for an action movie right there. And that 1911 with the Cobra grips in that movie is used in the grocery store to good effect against the bad guys. Of course, Sylvester Stallone ends up vanquishing the bad guys in the end. And the one line that resonates from that movie all the way back in the 1980s to present day is, You're a disease. I'm the cure. <laughs> okay, so I don't do Stallone very well. Anyway, number 10 on my list is the 1911 with the Cobra grips from the 1980s movie Cobra starring Sylvester Stallone. For the next two slots on my list, unfortunately, I don't have examples to be able to show you. Yet. <laughs> But in ninth place, I'll have to show you a photograph, is the brace of Colt Walkers used by Clint Eastwood in the movie The Outlaw Josie Wales. In fact, that photo of him is so iconic, holding one walker in each hand, that you see it all over the place. You see it hanging in bars, you see it in places where you wouldn't even expect memorabilia to be, like in gun shops or western tax shops or what have you, there is that photo of Clint Eastwood holding those two Colt Walkers. And of course, it is on the movie poster as well. And that depiction and that iconic image of Clint Eastwood with those two Colt Walkers is good enough for ninth place on my list. Coming in at number eight is the 1874 Sharps rifle used by Tom Selleck in the movie Quigley Down Under. And you talk about a portrayal where the firearm nearly overshadowed the star of the movie. The 1874 Sharps in that movie is so iconic that it spawned its own type of sports shooting. Black powder cartridge rifle silhouette shooting largely owes its existence to the portrayal of the 1874 Sharps in that movie Quigley Down Under. In fact, it is so well known that whenever someone looks at a long-barreled Sharps rifle or even something else that's a vintage rifle from the late 1800s with a long barrel. They refer to it as a Quigley rifle. So again, that is an extremely iconic portrayal of that historic firearm in the movie Quigley Down Under. If you've never seen it and you're a fan of Western movies, do yourself a favor and watch it. If you have seen it, you already know everything that takes place and all the exploits of Tom Selleck as Matthew Quigley with that rifle. And it was good enough for the number eight spot on my list. This firearm is indelibly linked to one of the most popular fictional characters in literature and movies of all time. And I don't even have to tell you who it is. We all know it's Ian Fleming's British super spy, James Bond, and his PPK. We also probably know, or at least some of you know, that James Bond didn't start out with the PPK. Doesn't matter. This is the firearm that is always associated with him. It is one of the big reasons I wanted to own one. I talked about that when I did my review of this, which is actually a PPKS. Even so, these are great little firearms in their own right, but their portrayal in those James Bond movies, that iconic view of 007 with his PPK doing battle with the bad guys all the way back through those movies and the, well, for now, what are we up to? 50 years of James Bond, 40 years, something like that, going all the way back to the 1960s. In any case, this is my number seven finisher on the list of all-time favorite movie firearms. It is the Walther PPK, as used by 007 James Bond. Earning the sixth place spot in my list is the M1903 A4 sniper rifle 
used by Barry Peppers as Private Jackson in the movie Saving Private Ryan. Now, if you know anything about these rifles and their scopes, and particularly their mounting systems, you know there are some technical issues with the way the rifle is depicted in that movie. Even so, it is an outstanding performance by Barry Peppers. It's a great, great exhibition of this particular rifle and showing some of its capabilities. Maybe a little bit overdone for the movie, but even so, it was an outstanding movie, an outstanding depiction of the O3A4, and as I said, it was good enough for sixth place in my list. In fifth place on my list is another military sniper rifle. This time, it is the M40A1 sniper rifle used by Thomas Beckett in his portrayal of Marine Master Gunnery Sergeant Thomas Beckett in the 1993 movie Sniper. In that movie, Tom Berenger's character is a Marine sniper, and the movie is loosely based on the real life of Marine sniper Carlos Hathcock, and a lot of his exploits are depicted in the movie by Tom Berenger's character using the M40A1, and that performance, both as a Marine sniper and that portrayal of the M40A1, were good enough to win this rifle fifth place on my list of top 10 movie firearms. In fourth place on my list is the firearm that pretty much made the 1980s when it came to police action movies, and that is the Beretta 92. By the way, in those action movies back in the day, like Lethal Weapon and Die Hard, you ever notice that the cool guy who carried the Beretta pistol never used a holster, it was always just stuck in a waistband? I don't know if holsters just were uncool back in the 1980s or what, but nobody ever used a holster. Anyway, the Beretta pistol in those iconic action movies of the 1980s was portrayed everywhere. You almost can't watch a movie from the 1980s that involves some sort of a police action story without seeing Beretta pistols all over the place. And it is a very good pistol in its own right. But in this context of my all-time favorite movie firearms, this is good enough for fourth place. And again, it is the Beretta 92 semi-automatic pistol. And the second runner-up, or is it the first runner-up? Whatever it is, <laughs> number three on the list comes to us from one of my favorite 1980s action movies. It is Lone Wolf McQuaid starring Chuck Norris, and it is his nickeled, 6-inch Smith & Wesson Model 29. That revolver, as depicted in that movie, is just a tremendous piece of Americana. The whole movie just oozes masculine testosterone. Yes, it's over the top. Yes, it is not realistic at all. But I just absolutely love the portrayal of that revolver in the movie. I loved it so much that when I had a chance to buy this one, <laughs> I did not hesitate. And you don't see too many of these. I feel fortunate to have it. And again, it is because of that tremendous portrayal of the revolver in that movie by Chuck Norris in Lone Wolf McQuaid. And again, this is number three on my list of all-time favorite movie firearms. The number two finisher on my list, again, unfortunately, is one that I don't have an example of to show you, but I will be rectifying that at some point in the future. And it is the 1860 Colt Army Revolver used by Tom Selleck in the final shootout of the movie Quigley Down Under. Now, that revolver and its twin are shown throughout the movie being handled and used by Alan Rickman, who plays Elliot Marsden. But at the very end of the movie, one of those revolvers is given to Tom Selleck. And everybody repeat the line after me. I never said I didn't know how to use it. <laughs> it is a great ending to an extremely good movie. It is very entertaining. And the depiction of the 1860 Army Revolver throughout the movie and in that final scene were good enough to win it the number two spot on my all-time top ten favorite movie firearms. And we've arrived at my number one favorite movie firearm of all time. And I have a feeling that a lot of you have been waiting very impatiently for this one. And yes, it is... Dirty Harry's Model 29 44 Magnum. There it is for everyone to see. And so iconic was the 44 Magnum as used by Clint Eastwood playing Dirty Harry Callahan that when the movie was first released in 1971, Model 29s virtually vanished from the shelves. In fact, it was years until the supply caught up with the demand. And even then, purportedly, whenever a Dirty Harry movie aired on TV in a rerun, it would boost the sales of the Model 29 immediately after that movie was shown. 
and some of the greatest movie lines of all time were uttered by Clint Eastwood playing Dirty Harry while he was standing behind this revolver. Things like, go ahead, make my day. Did I fire six shots or only five? And of course... But being this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and will blow your head clean off, you could ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Thank you, Inspector Callahan, wherever you are. <laughs> and that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember, WarbirdBunker.com is making t-shirts for the channel. If you go to WarbirdBunker.com, you can find my t-shirt there and all of Nathan's other firearms and patriotic themed gear. And if you use my discount code there, which is hrfunk for you, that will save you 10% off anything you purchase from WarbirdBunker.com. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.